Creating engagement in the classroom, understanding the challenges of the modern day learning environment is written by Kevin Popovich and Ryan Bancher. Welcome to our next webinar in our series, Creating Engagement in the Classroom. I'm Kevin Popovich, a lecturer at San Diego State University. Today we'll be learning about attendance and student success. And I'm Ryan Bancher, an undergraduate student at San Diego State University and co-author with Kevin of our ebook, Creating Engagement in the Classroom. Today we're going to be discussing attendance and student success where we will investigate the relationship between attendance and classroom success. Ryan, as we know, academia is constantly on the move. Whether you're a student or a professor, your life is hectic. It just is, and it has to be to keep up with the constantly evolving trends we touched on our first webinar. As a professor, specifically, one of the greatest day-to-day -day challenges is monitoring classroom attendance. I know it seems pretty easy, right? Roll call was never very stressful. When you were in school, you sit there, you raise your hand, uh, and speak up when the professor calls your name. Easy enough, right? But if you look at it from the other side, from behind the teacher's eyes, attempting to keep track of 500 students per section can be exhausting, stressful, and just downright difficult, right? Using traditional paper and pen methods of tracking attendance also result in a waste of precious class time uh, and paper resources. So over the course of a semester, if you figure 10 minutes per day result, it can re you know, get you back nearly three hours of, of teaching time. And so that's a lot of learning that your students aren't gonna receive by sitting class by class, just hearing their names called out to each other. So if you try to streamline the process and track attendance by having students sign into class and you'll know, use a dozen sheets of paper per lecture, all of which you can then have to collect, log, and save for years to come. Uh, you also rely on the students being honest and not signing in their friends who decide to sleep in. Good luck with that one. Mm -hmm. uh, as a result, many classrooms have chosen to simply do away with attendance altogether. But is that the answer? For a student, the concept of an attendance-free class is liberating, but I think it's also very dangerous, right? And so. After all, no one's, if no one's going to notice whether you're there or not, what's the point in actually going? Um, that hour saved in class provides students with this false sense of freedom, and they're able to choose how to spend that time, whether that's at the beach, with a friend, the mall, uh, basically, you know, wherever they want. But when midterms and exams roll around, and those six hours saved by not going to class have transformed that student's A down to a C, or, you know, sometimes even worse, um, and all because they could not comprehend the material. Now, Korsky sent out a survey to professors at San Diego State University to track the importance of attendance. All professors surveyed said attendance was either somewhat, 25%, or very important, 75%, but 60% report not taking attendance. Less than 10% of professors reported that they take attendance with an eye clicker, while more than 60% report that they do not take class attendance at all. So what is holding professors back to record their students' attendance? The answer is time and effort. One quote was, I do think attendance is important and inspires engagement. I highly value in-class exercise where students form groups and help each other. Uh, it helps with their own understanding a lot since you only fully understand it if you can explain it to your friends. But I never really force attendance since my philosophy is I want my class to be interesting enough so my students will simply attend voluntarily instead of being forced to uh, my class every morning. And that was uh, Professor Jeff Wang. Uh, at San Diego State. So I personally experience um, exactly what Professor Wang is mentioning here, right? If a teacher is making the class interesting or unique, I'm definitely going to go. Uh, another option is for the professor to, to simply just go above and beyond what's necessary to ensure student success. Um, this can come in the form of extended office hours, uh, more personal engagement opportunities, uh, chances to speak beyond the classroom, you know, that, that really tend to make me want to show up. And when somebody's going the extra mile for me as a student, I obviously want to return the favor. Um, but when a class is, you know, gigantic and there's no personalization, I think the results can get pretty predictable, right? And so I think Emily Flanagan was a student who, who had a very good quote. She said, every large lecture class that she'd been enrolled in seems to magically triple in size on the days of these exams. Um, they know that the professor doesn't bother to check who's missing on any given day. And so they just show up on the one day that they have to. Um, and I think this is something that most students experience uh, on a day-to-day -day basis. Another quote that we got from a student named Karen who was an economics major, she said that I wouldn't say that her grades are great, but she didn't necessarily think that attendance had a relationship to her overall performance. And she, you know, she mentioned that she could teach the material uh, to herself on her own time. Uh, educators obviously are implementing some strategies that help combat these types of problems and encourage student attendance. Um, I've, I've actually spoken with Dr. Amy Randall at SDSU, who's a management professor, 
Um, and she uses a pretty interesting, uh, somewhat traditional method. And so at the beginning of every class, she has uh, all the names put into a hat and she draws five random names out of the hat to track their attendance. Um, it's, it's randomized, it really encourages students to come to class in order to avoid being chosen, uh, but she really places you know, significantly high point values on this specific activity. Um, and as we identified in our first webinar, you know, though the classroom is changing, it's becoming more modern, more advanced, right? And the students need fancier high def projectors. Uh, we're seeing smart boards and cloud-based apps that help to maintain engagement. Um, I guess you could pose the question that couldn't a technology advanced uh, method of tracking attendance, um, could that also pique their interest or at least improve those attendance rates? Well, I think as the classroom has evolved, so too is the need to track students' engagement within it. You know, this semester I, I implemented course key for managing attendance and I generate a unique code and share it with my students for my PowerPoint when they start filtering in the class about 10 minutes before we get started. As each student enters, they see the code, they enter it in a course key from their mobile device and the system tracks their attendance. And at the GPS base locator keeps them from sharing the code outside of the class with students not present and I really know ultimately who's in my class and who isn't. So there's little doubt that attendance plays an important role in a student's academic success. You know, I always say you have to show up for something good to happen. More engagement equals better results. And in today's world, professors have more access than ever before to technological advances that can revolutionize the way they take attendance and improve classroom engagement. So just as a slate blackboard morphed into a high definition TV, multifunctional smart interface, right? The paper and pen method of taking attendance will likely give way to the new age, one defined by efficiency accuracy and the benefits all around. So Ryan, so the first question I've got for you, Ryan, all right, in, in your heart of hearts, do you really think that attendance equals student success? Um, I think for most students that's true. Um, I, I had a unique learning experience where I wasn't able to attend class because of health issues. Um, and so I know that significantly impacted the way that I was able to you know, learn with the traditional resources, office hours, uh, you know, study groups, uh, lectures and PowerPoint. So I missed a lot of that. At the same time, I was able to, you know, as we mentioned, leverage some of these newer age technologies and learning tools to, to close that gap and make up for the, the, the inaccess to those types of resources. Um, so I do think attendance matters, but I think what matters more is your learning strategy. Um, and if, if showing up is a part of it, I think that's that's kind of primarily important. But it also goes back to what you're being told. If a campus has a free and open policy and they don't place big weight on showing up to class, that again could give you you know just a big enough excuse to not go and say, well, it's it's not required and it doesn't count. Now, if it, you look at for-profit institutions and, and how they demand attendance, you miss two classes, you're out of the program. Um, I think that places a much higher value on on the in in class activity. Um, so I really think it depends on the campus, but as, as a personal learning preference to the student um, and obviously your external circumstances that may or may not prevent you from attending courses. Uh, but ultimately, I think it's you can't get results if you don't show up to the gym. Like you said, you just got to be there for something good to happen. And I think you're missing out on plenty of uh, valuable learning opportunities if you're not attending the lecture. Okay. Uh, so let's go on with you, KP. Um, I'm not sure if you mandate attendance. I know at San Diego State in particular, you're not supposed to grade on it, um, but how do you tie attendance and participation together in order to kind of promote that? Well, I think that uh, as much as I can tell students that um, that uh, class is mandatory, and, you know, and I could put it in the syllabus, you know, you, you put some kind of rule in there about how many classes that, you know, you can miss before something happens. You know what, uh, I find that, you know, you, you have to use a bit of a, you know, put a kind of a banana on the stick, right? You know, so outside of saying that, you know, uh, uh, attendance is mandatory, I also put points assigned on it as well. So, uh, for instance, when I have students check in with Korski, they're able to uh, check in within my classroom, uh, but they also get five points for each of the different classes. So, you know, over a 15 week semester, you know, that's another 75 points that uh, that you can or cannot have depending upon your level of participation. So uh, that's some of the, uh, the processes that I put in place as well as some of the tools I put in place to enforce those processes, right? Because you can't just tell students that, you know, you're, you're gonna do something and then not do it. Mm -hmm. But the technology allows me to um, assign that, uh, make that decision early, put it in place, and then I'll have to worry about it. Keep it so, honest. Yeah. Okay. So 
that wraps up our first conversation uh, uh, for today. Um, again, uh, people can download our book at Creating Engagement in the Classroom. Dot com. Uh, you can read the blogs and you can follow uh, our hashtag creating engagement. Perfect. Thank you guys for showing up and uh, we'll see you guys next week in the following webinar. Creating engagement in the classroom, understanding the challenges of the modern day learning environment is written by Kevin Popovich and Ryan Vancher. To learn more about creating engagement in your classroom, visit creating engagement in the classroom.org or follow hashtag creating engagement.